Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. Good morning. And uh, thank you very much, Greg, uh, for this great introduction. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you on the last day of this uh, great event. And I would really like to extend a big thank you to Greg, Maria, and, uh, and the whole team for this fantastic event. You have set a new benchmark in ABB for our customers. Thank you. <laughs> Today, I want to talk about how the adoption of technology helps the prosperity co of companies and nations and is not a threat to us. At the heart of it is the robotics and automation technology that helps not only productivity, but increasingly flexibility of manufacturing, which is a huge demand of our, our customers. But not only productivity and flexibility, but it also creates new and better jobs. Protesting against new technology is not really new for us as humans. A um, couple of thousand years ago. This might remind you of uh, today people talking about technologies like AI. Uh, maybe there are some similarities. But if you f pass forward a couple of thousand years, how many of you know about the Red Flag Act? This is a, a law that was passed in the United Kingdom and parts in the, in the USA, 1865. And there was a rule that the, 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 when the car was introduced because of safety issues, that you cannot drive more than five miles per hour in the countryside, and in the city, two miles per hour. But the funny thing is that they introduced this red flag, which is you have to have a person walking in front of the car uh, a couple of feet in front to make sure that the car is safe. And you know, many talked about this, that this, the reason was safety, but actually the reason was that it was pushed by the horse carriage industry to protect their jobs. And today, this is a note in history. So, quite interesting. This is a picture of a robot system uh, taken out of the uh, Munich National Science Museum. This is a robot that uh, I, I, together with my team, I have developed 25 years ago. And what is interesting here is that technologies that we have been working on 25 years ago, like machine learning, the, uh, the, you know, the, the speed uh, development of robots, being able to assemble while you're, while you're moving, autonomous vehicles is all part of that. But you know, it took decades until these technologies really entered into mainstream. So that gives me real confidence that there is no super robot race out there to crush us. It will take time until these things really think, and they will at the end of the day be tools for us. We in ABB have been writing the future of robotics since decades. In 1974, we have introduced the first new microprocessor controlled robot uh, into the automotive industry. Uh, and you know what is, what is special about it? You were able to program the robot as opposed to before you had to use a cassette. Every time you change the movement, you have to basically reprogram, put a new cassette in. So that really revolutionized the way robots uh, work. Now, this robot is actually still up and running in Sweden, so it, it's, it's uh, functioning. But since then, the uh, robotics industry have evolved dramatically. 2.5 million robots have been installed worldwide by, by the industry. But last year, 400,000 were introduced. So about a quarter of the, of the last 40 years was produced last year. So you can see the adoption rate is really accelerating. But we are also working on new technologies uh, that are really fascinating. One is the collaborative robotics, making sure that the robots can work with humans hand in hand at the same workplace. The other one is digitalization, making sure that the robots are connected. All our robots worldwide are connected with an internet IP address. And simplicity. Our customers are asking for robots to be easy to program, and that is a huge drive for, for us. 
Let's look at a fascinating video. How far collaborative robots have come. It's very precise, of course, because it's a robot. And, uh, and that's like the perfect partner, because it always does the same. It, has, it always has perfect timing. We are, as of now, very much stepping into a future where robots and artificial intelligence will be a part of our life. And I think it's interesting to, to see how we will deal with that. How, how are we going to live our lives with, ro with robots in the future? This is done with our newest technology, Safe Move 2, which is a technology that allows you to work close to a robot. Five years ago, by law, this was not allowed to be done. Today, it is possible to do. And Frederick himself, this is a 2,000-pound robot, basically is able to carry a, a car. And Frederick himself has a, is, is one of the famous uh, uh, dancers and actors in, uh, in Sweden. And he has a very interesting uh, uh, history. He told us that 30 years ago, he used to work in our robotic factory uh, that built these robots. And his father, 50 years ago, worked in the same factory carrying heavyweight back and forth, back and forth. And he was inspired by the new technology and how today robots will be tools for us to help support. So he created this, uh, this theater and, and this, this uh, um, wonderful uh, place that you can visit. And then we had 44 sold out uh, um, uh, theaters across Sweden. And it's one of the most downloaded videos um, across. So it's really fascinating how far technology has, has come provided us. But collaborative robotics is not only about what you saw, making all robots being accessible. Another technology that we have developed, uh, the first one is our Yumi, where basically you have a robot that inherently is safe. You can touch that robot and it stops. It really doesn't help you. It, it, it works on small parts assembly, for example. You can feed the robot. The robot does things, and then you can, you can back up. The robot does what it is good at doing, which is high quality, high speed, and high precision. But the human can work side by side with that robot. What is interesting also here is that you can see the lady. She's actually, with a virtual world, programming the robot. So this is the new millennials who will work with digital natives that can work differently with robots. This robot is possible to program by just pulling your hand from one side to the other, and the programming is done. Think about the new types of jobs that this will create. And the possibility is not only for manufacturing words that you can actually adapt faster, but also that people with different types of education will enter this work workplace, which is really fascinating. Now, the reason for all of this is the M&Ms. I don't know if you've seen, but if you go on the website of uh, M&M, there is a website, I think it's mymms.com, you can really customize your own M&Ms. You can pick your, your uh, color, the name, put the name of your girlfriend or your friend, and get it shipped to you. Now, on one hand, this is fantastic for my children, but on the other hand, think of what this means for the industry. Each product is different the whole supply chain needs to adapt to, to this uh, demand of the customers. I call that the Amazon effect. When I was a child, maybe five types of uh, yogurt were available. Today, Danone alone has more than 200 types of yogurt and seven lines. So think of what this really means for production. This is going to revolutionize production. And if you're not part of that flexible manufacturing, you're out of business. So you have to invest in technologies. And this puts pressure on the whole supply chain, because you have to adapt to that. We today can build a machine that produces bottles of beer and fills them 100 bottles of beer per minute. Now, customers are asking us today, can you fill each bottle of beer with a different beer and a different label? Because we have seasons, summer, winter, whatever marketing ideas come up. And we are producing today 
technology is we add a robot that is able to pick the bottle of beer, put a label on it at the same speed. So customers are asking, can I have flexibility whilst having the productivity not reduced? And it's possible today. Another big trend is data. All of us use data at home to, for multiple things. My kids use all of these, uh, especially the one in the middle. Uh, but we use them also for navigation, making decisions on the spot, and so on. But what is interesting, it used to be that technologies would come from the industry world into the consumer world, and that has reversed. Technologies that we see today in the consumer world, like visual perception, like um, virtual reality, games, and so on, are actually coming into the, the, the business world. We're using the same technologies now to adapt and make the access to technology simpler. Now, let's have a look at uh, a manufacturing line that we have built for our customer, where the customer asked us in uh, July 2017, can you build the whole manufacturing line here in the US in 16 weeks? Or could you be done in... Uh, in uh, April. So we simulated the whole manufacturing line with our tool, Robot Studio. You can do that. We went through the customer, even the cycle time. He said, I don't like this, I don't like this. I would have people employed here. The safety aspects is not, is not the, the way I like it. We basically modeled it, and then we told the customer, yes, we can do that. We delivered it in six weeks. April, it was up and running. We could even um, modify the cycle time. He wanted four, every 40 seconds a product coming out of the production line, and this is possible with technologies today. We simulate it, and you reduce the engineering effort tremendously and reduce risk because you don't have to build something and then test it. And at the end, uh, you know, you discover, oh my gosh, you know, I, I should have done a layout differently or m might have needed something, something else. So fascinating technologies that help simplify the way we access the technology world. And again, the people who actually program this, these are new jobs created. They are different than the ones before, but they are really new and, and also enriching. New technologies, for example, like uh, in this case, the worker has a virtual world, and it can assemble a, a highly complex uh, door of a car. Uh, ten years ago, this, this would have taken months to learn. Now, the millennials, XYZ uh, uh, generations, they're used to, you know, they're data native. They will use these technologies, and they will be different in the future to be able to actually assemble a car um, in this way. But not only that, you know, a service technician used to wa walk around with the dirty, uh, you know, uh, oil on his, on his hand, touching and, and uh, looking at the motor, if it's running or not. This is our newest technology in the motor. It has a sensor on it. You put it on. It's a smart sensor. And it basically tells you how healthy I am. You don't have to actually go there. It just sends out data. You look at it. And um, if something is wrong, you look, you can go, and you can re replace. And with newest technologies like predictive analytics and machine learning, they actually can detect patterns. So in the past, it was running well, and then some certain temperatures, humidities made the motor default. And then you can predict in the future and tell the customer, you know what? Most likely in two weeks, it will break. will come on the weekend when you, have, you don't have anything up and running and replace, uh, replace it. So again, these are new jobs. Um, that are created, and they're, they're, they will add productivity to our customers. Now, a very important topic uh, dear to my heart and to ABB is education and training. This is from our facility here in robotics training. With all these changes, we have a big responsibility as a company, but also as a society, to train and get our people along with all of these new technologies. And it's easier said than done. I think it's, it's a collaborative effort between we as companies and local communities. We, in ABB, we have 24,000 employees in, in the United States uh, through more than 14 billion of acquisitions. And Greg and the team are really driving this collaboration with the local community, like in Arkansas, where we have our um, uh, motors factory. We work with the local community to build 
sim something similar to an apprenticeship program where people get excited about new technologies. If you look at these type of technologies, they are different. You don't have to, you know, make your hands uh, dirty and, you know, I don't want, I want to have a clean job. No, but these are really cool jobs. They're all technology, but they're a really cool job. We, are, uh, we have an apprenticeship program. Uh, about 200 uh, people will, will, will graduate every, every year. So we're investing a lot to do that. And I think it's really one of the most important things is to get, you know, people into these, into these professions and um, get them excited about it. Let me sum up. Global competition will f force us to invest in automation and in robotization and in new technologies to be competitive. But also these co uh, technologies will help us be able to increase our productivity, but also prosperity. They will introduce new jobs, but not only new jobs. They are really exciting jobs for the future and for the next generation. And by the way, we are the only global robotics company that manufactures robots in the United States. Two years ago, we decided to uh, build a factory in Michigan, close to Detroit, to be able to serve our customers in the US. And so, uh, <laughs> we did that because we believe in this economy uh, we want to be a big contributor to the further success of this great nation. Thank you very much for listening.